Hello, everyone, and welcome to Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse for CTN's live coverage of high school wrestling. Tonight, a Northwest Suburban Conference matchup between the Coon Rapids Cardinals and the Elk River Elks, along with Zon Neighbor and Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young. And, guys, again, a Coon Rapids team looking to compete for the conference championship, an Elk River team that is just hoping to compete tonight. You're right, Joe. Elk River comes in with a very young team. Just the top six weights are filled by all freshmen, three freshmen and three sophomores. Very young team. Coon Rapids should show some strength here, uh, especially in the middle weight classes. But this truly should be a tune-up for Coon Rapids looking to peak at the end of this month and getting into February with the big tournament. Well, and every week so far this season, it seems, the Northwest Suburban Conference opponent for the Cardinals has been a bit of a warm-up for a big tournament on the weekend. Of course, over the holiday break, they were in the Minnesota Christmas Tournament, or the Rumble on the Red, rather, uh, out in Fargo, Minnesota Christmas Tournament a couple weeks before that. This weekend, Columbia Heights duel. Uh, very, very good schedule put together early for Coon Rapids. I think they, it's very important because they're going to have some flexibility in which weight classes these kids finish the season at. They want to see who looks good at what weights and what's going to make the team the strongest when you get to the middle of February when you start wrestling the Anokas and Centennials and getting into the Section 7 when you'll pick up Cambridge Asante and St. Francis. Don't you know, forget Forest Lake. You know, guys, I talked to head coach Paul Nelson before, and we, you know, I asked him, "What are your expectations here tonight?" And he said, "You know, we just we just want to compete, and, and they know coming in the Coon Rapids is a good program." And, and I think, and, and Zon, you remember because you wrestled back when they wrestled in loincloths, but you remember Elk River has certainly been strong. Uh, they put out some decent teams over the years, but I think he kind of gave me the impression that this team downed us to maybe a little bit this year. You're right, and I'd say I think it's, it's not so much down as it is inexperienced right now. I think they've got some good wrestlers, but you don't compete with the elite teams of the Northwest Suburban with a lineup dominated by freshmen and sophomores. Right. Speaking of the lineup, let's take a look at the starters for tonight at 103. Larley Vang against the Cardinals, Darren Gagne. Luke Stocker for the Cardinals at 112 against Jacob Staffenhagen. At 119, it's Eric Stevens for the Elks, Brandon Peterson for the Cardinals, Dan Coughlin for Coon Rapids against Nick Madison from Elk River at 125. At 130, Chad Mack will face Tyler Stevens from Elk River. Mike Murphy, who was presented an award just a little bit before this, signifying a major milestone in his Cardinal career, will actually win by forfeit tonight. Kyle Anderson will take on Luke Lubinsky at 140. Matt Jelkowski against Wade Forty, a very good wrestler for Elk River at 145. For the Cardinals at 152, Yang Luck Dang against Nick Smith. Tyler Gregerson against Carter Adams for the Cardinals at 160. Zach Sira against Jason Harbinson at 171. Sean Ofterhar against Eric Birdall at 189. 215, it's Wesley Grace Patil against Kyle Wyman. And at the heavyweights, it's Tanner Lowe for the Cardinals against Ryan Koikendall. Well, you know, Zahn, I think we were told uh, earlier that uh, 189 and 215 uh, move spots in the, in the lineup. What was some of the thinking there, do you feel? Well, I believe... Uh, Eric Birdall's natural weight is, he's been wrestling a lot at 189, and Wesley Grace Patil had trouble making 215 last weekend. So I just think that was a misprint in our earlier program. A happy birthday to Coach Montague before we hear our national anthem performed by Chris Anderson. Oh, God. 
Nice job on the Star Spangled Banner by Chris Anderson. And as we talked about it a moment ago, Mike Murphy, a special award just a moment ago. The signified 100 wins, am I right? Yeah, that is correct, 100 wins. And it's a nice award. One of only seven in Coon Rapids history. And certainly congratulations to him. Would have, would have liked to seen him wrestle tonight, but he will win by forfeit. I'm sure he would have liked to have wrestled tonight as well. His, his opponent for tonight did not make weight. Nope. So. Get her done, Kyle. And what do you get on day of match? Is it you get a slight? Oh, tonight would be he would be wrestling. Well, actually, with January first, you get an additional pound. So. It would have been 136 pounds, I believe. Then when you wrestle a tournament the next day, or a lot of times they will give you an allowance of two pounds. But tonight, I believe it would have been 136. On February 1st, they pick up another so pound. If it's probably two pounds on January 1st and one pound on February 1st. 136.1, and you're just too much. Yep. Actually, Wesley. So if you're a tenth of a pound over, they uh, you can't wrestle. Exactly. That happened uh, last weekend, I believe. Wow. The rumble on the red with JV with Grace Patil, who will wrestle at 215 tonight. He was a tenth of a pound over, and did not wrestle all weekend. Long ways to go, not to wrestle. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although I did see a lot of first round buys, right, and I don't know if that is how that off. tournament is scheduled, but as I look through the weight classes of the Rumble on the Red. A lot of first round buys and just such a huge tournament, so many brackets. Right, there's over, they wrestle over 3,000 matches in two days. That's an incredible tournament. First up, we will have Larley Vang for Elk River against Darren Gagne for the Cardinals. Freshman for Coon Rapids, facing a senior for Elk River. And you talked about it, Zon, that with the youth in the top of their lineup for Elk River, they will need to do well in the lower weights to try and make up for that. You're exactly right. I mean, North Carolina can get off to a good start here. I mean, they've got a senior here wrestling at 103 pounds, which you don't see very often. No. But I really look for some good matches at 130, 140, and 145. Three in a row there. We'll have Chad Mack versus Tyler Stevens. I believe Tyler Stevens was a state entrant uh, from Section 8 last year. Uh, then you're going to get Holton Lubinsky, a sophomore from Elk River uh, comes in, but he's a very experienced wrestler. Uh, he's going to give Kyle Anderson all he can... Uh, Handle and then Wade Forty at 145 pounds going against Matt Jolkowski will be another tough match for Matt Jolkowski. Wrestles a lot of JV, however, with uh, tonight's national anthem singer Chris Anderson out because of an injured hand. He usually wrestles at 145. Matt Jolkowski is going to get an opportunity on the varsity mat. Gagne losing his headgear early. Being the aggressor and took Vang to the mat momentarily anyways. Well, Zon, will there be a point where uh, they will obviously let him continue wrestling if you do lose the headgear? Is there a point where they, uh, obviously at a break he'll have to put it back on, but they won't do it before that, will they? Right, well, as long as there's action going on, they're not gonna stop the match to put on the headgear, but the first break here, when they start over at the center of the mat, they would... Uh, Gagne in some trouble as Vang putting the cradle on and working him back toward the center of the mat. Break it, Darren! Just over, or just less than a minute into this first period. Uh, Vang was awarded a point to start the match when uh, Gagne apparently didn't have the proper mouth guard in for braces. I believe you got to have two of them for the top and the bottom. He just has one in. Yeah, that would, you know, almost make it seem like it would be uncomfortable with two mouth guards in there. Oh, it's definitely uncomfortable with just the one mouth guard in right. there even, but I'll tell you what, 
you want to have them in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Faces. I mean, you get a cross face of any type, you will tear your lips. My brother did it to me on purpose right, when I now. had braces. Would rub my lips into my braces. I it could, didn't feel good. I can understand that. <laughs> I bet it didn't feel good. And Alex, he's got some uh, issues with the strap. I think. It, I I'm a little surprised that they don't let him just wax the braces. Because if you put wax over them, keeps them from digging into either the inside of your lip or into your opponent's arm or what the case may be. Definitely a safety issue where they're, you know, it's protecting oh, at himself, both, the both wrestlers. wrestlers. Absolutely. I did see when, we, when I was in high school, we, it wasn't a rule that you had to have the mouthpiece. And we did, I did see a guy who forgot a mouthpiece once and get cross-faced and see his... You know, lips turn into almost hamburger. Mm -hmm. We have we have the crane here in attendance at the match, so we get a nice overhead shot. Plus, it's got a little mic. It's actually picking up what. Uh, what as the long as as long as Nate doesn't run it into the back of anybody's head. Now nah, Nate can handle it. That's, do that's doctor. That's doctor Nate. There's head coach Bob Adams. What a fine wrestling program here at Coon Rapids. Your Your camera after, hanging after right, right over the Coon Rapids bench. You know, it's an adventure. And we've now lost our scoreboard. Well, we knew we'd have to fill a little time early. <laughs> we didn't know it was going to be quite this early. Now, plus, we got about a 45-minute uh, start, late start. There's Paul Nelson the head coach for Elk River in his first season as the head man for the Elks. What do we have for time? 39. Adam Tronson looking, uh, getting approval from the bench in terms of what time was left. Oh. Yeah, let's go. Paul Nelson is the uncle of Tony Nelson, the number one rated 215 pounder from Cambridge Isanti okay. this year. You were, you were connected into the wrestling well, community. Tony Nelson was a state champion last year, and he was an outstanding fullback against uh, the Rapids football I remember, team this I remember year. Tony made Nelson, a, yep. Made a nice long run for a touchdown. Yep. Very physical wrestler and football player. Vang rides Gagne right out the far side of the ring. A little less than 30 seconds left. Vang with a nice period with a 5-0 lead and good control with 20 seconds left. Gagne able to get to his feet, flipped him down and can he get the reversal? There it is. He gets a couple of points before the end of period one. It's a nice move by Darren. Comes up with a take that'll tell a little bit more strength though. He turns that into a pinning combination. Vang doing a nice job of just giving up the two points. Now we've got a nice, uh, nice match to start this one. Switching from a single to a double. Going to get him some points, and he's going to get some back points here. It's like he might want to switch to a half Nelson here. He switches to a half, he can lift his head. Trying to stretch out the left arm of Vang. Well, Vang's doing a good job of staying out of the pit. Well, there it is. Gets it there. Oh, nice start for Coon Rapids. They get the 6-0 lead. 
Outstanding job by the freshman. Came out, fell behind early, 5-0. Came back, made a 5-2 at the end of the first. And I think it was the headgear, the change of headgear. I could have been it, there's something <laughs> in that. 112, Jacob Steffenhagen for Elk River against Cardinals Luke Stocker. Nice job and by Staffenhagen. Went from a single leg to almost like a quick little duck under. Able to score the first points of this 112 pound match. Getting control of that right arm on Stocker and getting it back behind his back. Stogger almost got back to his feet. Yeah, Stephen Hagen did a nice job of making sure he didn't, didn't get up and put him back to the mat. Working on that right arm again, which you can see has a pad on it already. Able to break that arm free. And broken right back down again, but a two point lead for Staffenhagen after the first. Nice job from the top with Staffenhagen. Did a nice job of controlling Luke Stocker there. Luke not really coming close to any type of an escape or reversal. You know, Zantu, you know, I think this program, Coon Rapids, you know, has, has a few more question marks at certain uh, weights than in, in other years. Absolutely. Uh, just looking down the lineup, and, you know, the, Coon Rapids has some, you know, the outstanding kids, you know, the four captains, Murphy, Anderson, Adams, and Birdall, uh, all seniors. Coon Rapids knows what they're going to get out of those guys. However, there's a, there's a lot of wild cards in here that are going to make the difference when it comes into the end of the year when they wrestle Anoka. It's going to be, and Anoka's got the same thing going. They've got some outstanding individuals, but they've also got some inexperienced weights. Well, and when I talked to Adam Tronson uh, before this match, he said that, I mean, this lineup could look very different by the end of the year. A lot of uh, maybe some younger wrestlers getting a little more, little more time come sections. And they're going to need them all. Luke Stocker coming up here. The reversal, nice switch. We'll see here now, Luke Stocker got some varsity action towards the end of last year. Uh, solid contributor. Now this year here is getting a lot of experience as a junior. And I, I really think uh, he's going to have some outstanding conditioning. So we'll see how this second half of this match goes as he enters it down by two points, four to two. We're trying to work Staffenhagen into the cradle. He's got his hands together. Tried to roll it over and lost his grip. Still working at it. I'd like to try and get, a, get some points before the end of the second period. Oh, now we got a reverse cradle. Nice job by Staffenhagen. And that will increase his lead to 6-2 just before the buzzer sounds on period two. Now Stocker's gonna have his work cut out for him here in the third period. Down 6-2. 
Jack immediately goes to a stand up, but brought back down to the map by Staffenhagen. That's very important for Luke to get back up to his base because Staffenhagen did a nice job riding him out there in the uh, end of the first period. Staffenhagen still working on that right arm. Flip Stocker over. Yeah, three more points now for Stefan Hagen. Under a minute. Luke looking for Cradle again. A couple points there for Luke. 9-4 now. Stephanie again trying to get control of that right foot of Stocker. Get it out of his base. Time is running out. We're at 10 seconds remaining in this match. Another reversal for Staffenhagen, and he will walk away with an 11-4 victory. It was a nice match for Jacob uh, Stefanhagen. He controlled it from start, pretty much from start to finish. Yeah, it was well wrestled. He gave up a couple of reversals there, but I think he was in control of that match most of the way. Had a little scare there when he was in the cradle, but other than that, uh, he actually turned that into his advantage. Eric Stevens against Brandon Peterson for Coon Rapids. In match number three, the 119 pound class. This is a weight class that's normally filled by Karan Nix for the Cardinals. A little under the uh, weather today. Yep, sick, he's uh, rated in the top 10 in the state. Uh, unable to wrestle tonight because of illness. Rated number nine. Of course, Cardinals rated number six as a team. You know, you look at that section at four, five, and six in the in the state rankings, all in section seven, and then St. Francis rated number eleven. Turn it into an outstanding section once again. Peterson trying to shoot in, or Stevens rather, trying to shoot in on Peterson. Peterson coming up with a, defending it with a whizzer. Gets out of it. Stevens able to get behind and get the takedown. Stevens immediately puts in a leg and is going for the splits. The wizard, huh? Is that what you call it? Yep. What is exactly a wizard? I didn't. Uh... Uh, if, you've, if you've got your arm around my back, I'm going to put my arm over your shoulder. Okay. And, it, and try to. I'm going to try to drive your shoulder to the mat. All right. Get you off balance. I can get out of the takedown. If we get some time, maybe you can show uh, practice that on Joe. Maybe <laughs> we'll see how that works. <laughs> Starts off with a switch and gets re-switched by Stevens. 
Nice counter by Stevens from Elk River. We have a grandy roll coming here. There it is. Not quite enough nope. kick. Almost had it. Standing up again. Peterson worked his way to his base, but gotta keep that head up or he gets slapped down with the cradle. Like that? Three near fall points for Stevens. Yeah, that was a nice job getting out of that. Under 10 seconds remaining second period, and it looks like Stevens gonna go to the third period with a 5-0 lead. Elk River could tie this match with a decision. Was of course, very early, only a third match, but. We have to be pretty impressed so far with Elk River's lower weights. They've been doing a good job. That first match was, was a good job too. They didn't get, get it done there. Coon Rapids got the pin, but last two wrestlers for Elk River all right, Stevens Pretty impressive. Here, outstanding wrestler. That tell you, in two more weights, we've got Tyler Stevens. Uh, like I say, he was a state entrant, and he's going to be followed by Lubinsky and Forty. Uh, so we're going to see. We're going to go through the. This is the toughest part of the Elk River lineup right now. The is going to have to keep it close so they can finish it off strong when they get to their strengths of Murphy, Anderson, Adams, and Birdall. Peterson in some trouble and pinned early in period number three. Well that, that's going to give the lead to Elk River at 9-6. Pretty impressive in the first at 112 and 119. There you'll see the, the pin coming up. Gets a slap on the mat. Nice tight half Nelson. One twenty-five, Nick Madsen for the Elks against the Cardinals, Dan Coughlin. <laughs> Coughlin trying to get around behind Madsen. There and there it is. First match tonight, the car or first yeah match tonight that the Cardinals have scored the first points. Yeah, Howie, you mentioned you know they got the Cardinals got the pin in that first period or in that first match, but Vang had a 5-2 lead yep. going into that second period. And you know, in previous years, wrestling from the feet at the start of the match has always been one of the Cardinals' strengths during the season. Uh, right now, tonight. Not looking that way. Again, only the fourth match. Well, you know, too, you look at the heart of that Elk River lineup coming up here. And they have to wrestle well to have a chance to, to win here this evening. Coughlin trying to get... Madsen flipped over. Come on, get out of here. 
Madsen using a lot of energy just to keep off his back. 30 seconds remaining in the first period. Coughlin released and then changed his grip a little bit. Trying to get Madsen turned over. Has to slip that shoulder. That's able to break free. Time's going to run out, but a good period for Dan Coughlin and Nick Madsen. Now, two very different coaching styles. You look at the Coon Rapids bench, very vocal are the coaches, and look over at Elk River. Not, uh, not a lot of uh, shouting from that side. I don't know if that'll... Stoic. Yeah, very stoic. It's the Brad Childress approach. Yeah, well. I won't comment on that. <laughs> Coughlin quickly getting a reversal to start the second. And Madsen back in trouble again. A lot of time in this period. Talked about the amount of energy he had to expend keeping himself off the mat in period number one. And now 90, almost 90 seconds left here in period number two. And he finds himself in almost the exact same position. This is Coughlin again getting near fall points. However, I don't, I, th I think he can rack up a lot of near fall points with this move here, but it's gonna be tough to pin unless he slips that shoulder. Two more, or three more points for Coughlin. He's able to dominate that match with that hole. Like I say, he can rack up the near fall points quickly, and he is getting close to a Tech technical fall. fall. One more three point back points, and one, two, three. This will be it if he uh, if Madsen gets out, and he does. And a tech fall at 457, or 357. Oh, well, nice match for our Dan Coughlin. Dominated that that one from start to finish. Got the with the tech fall. That's an outstanding job by Coughlin, and he's going to be one of the keys as the Cardinals get through the month of January and into February. They're gonna need a lot of team points out of Dan. Puts them back in front, 11 to nine, moves us to 130 where Chad Mack will, for the Cardinals will take on Tyler Stevens. Chad Mack and junior this year was a state entrant as a freshman. Uh, was sick for a lot of last year. Did not make it to state. I was looking for a return trip there this year, but Tyler Stevens also stayed entered from Elk River. So this should be an outstanding match. And I, I, I imagine the face mask on Stevens is to protect an injured nose, something to that effect. I would, most of the time it's a, it's a broken nose. We're a big fan of Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would think if you're completely healthy, you'd almost rather have that on because then crossface certainly isn't going to hurt quite no. as much. Uh, crossface isn't going to hurt, but you, your vision is really obstructed. I yeah. would imagine. It's hard to breathe in some of those. It's, well, it's uh, mental, but it's, uh, it's tough. But Stevens coming up with the takedown here to start the match. Come on, and gets the first two points. But as if there is a a broken nose underneath. I can't imagine cross faces feel good at all. 
No. <laughs> Can't okay. imagine the fit good at all at any point, ah. but especially yeah. with a broken nose. Matt quickly to his feet. If he can get behind him, he could finish the reversal. It's only one point for an escape. Now he can get. Now if he gets around behind him, he gets two points for a takedown. Nice ankle pick there. See if he can finish it off. Steven's doing a nice job of grabbing a leg and holding on. Mac trying to gain control of the right leg of Tyler Stevens. And potentially dangerous as he had him twisted up under there. And they will return to neutral, 14 seconds. Remaining in the period. All right, there it is, Chad. I wonder if Steven Sykes any of his opponents out wearing that mask a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I imagine he sees a lot of red. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But as a hockey player, kind of used to wearing a cage. Yeah. Mac I don't know that that would be uh, okay. I'm sure it's all what they get used to, and I don't know how long Stevens has been wearing the mask or how much longer he has to. Mac doing a good job of getting to his feet and turning around, and getting a hold of one of Stevens' feet. Sam Trump has to be pretty hoarse after uh, he's after always match. hoarse. Yeah, he's just screaming all the time. Tyler Stevens doing a nice job of countering Chad Mack's moves because right now it's there a he is. match so far. Chad Mack has been doing uh, doing most of the wrestling and are dictating the moves with uh, Tyler Stevens doing a lot of counters. I stand up to a switch there by Chad, but he's going to get cautioned for starting early. See if he goes back to the same move. I went straight to the switch. Getting control of that right leg of Stevens. Stevens seems to be very comfortable in these scramble situations. Single leg, see if he can trip. Stevens tried to roll out of it. Mack trying to catch him. Very important here. Chad could be in trouble. Oh, Stevens can't get that uh, hand in for some leverage. Uh, and, and Stevens ain't breathing much right now. Leg scissors. You don't see the leg scissors <laughs> very often, but. Yeah. Chad Mack doing a lot of work, but not being rewarded at any points yet. Still down two to one. Yeah, this, this entire period, we've seen a lot of wrestling, but no points. In period number two. And it'll be three to one or two to one yep. as we go to the third. And now we'll see how Stevens does from underneath. Now this one, this one is tight. These two wrestlers do not want to give up any more points. Chad has the legs in and he's trying to keep the splits, but 
I don't think he's going to be able to keep control of Stevens' right leg and turn him at the same time. Now we're going to get a stalemate. That's our first one of the match tonight. And a penalty point awarded to Tyler Stevens. That could prove to be a big point. Yep, Chad's going to have to turn him. Yep. One minute remaining in period three. And now he needs at least two. He has put Tyler Stevens in some very uncomfortable positions, but not been able to do anything with him. And now a reversal for Tyler Stevens increases his lead to 5-1. Yeah, now Max can really have to make something happen, and time is running out. 20 seconds, he needs a reversal into some back points. There's a switch for two. And now he needs a combination quickly. Let him go, and then he was trying for a quick headlock, but didn't really have it set up. It's a desperation move. Mac knew before the buzzer sounded that he just wasn't going to have time to get back around again. That was a nice match. Good match. Two outstanding yep. wrestlers. Elk River takes the one-point lead at 12-11. And here comes the forfeit. Kind of staring down that uh, Elk River bench over there. And he gets the uh, points. So 17-12 in favor of the Cardinals. Kyle Anderson onto the mat against Holton Lubinsky for the Elks. And again, the Elk River wrestler yep. able to score the first points. As you mentioned earlier, Zahn Lubinsky, just a sophomore. He's uh, coming out pretty aggressive here. Uh, good wrestler. He's been wrestling for a long time. Lots of freestyle. Has a Coon Rapids connection. His mother... Graduated from Coon Rapids in 1980. Peggy Moven. I think she would have wanted you to, to uh, broadcast what <laughs> year she graduated, and you might be in some trouble now, Zon. <laughs> Won't be the first time. Yeah, I'm sure not. Won't be the last, I'm sure, too. Anderson will get the one point escape. Another takedown for Lubinsky. Makes it 4-1. 30 seconds remaining in the first period. Lubinsky tried to turn him over. Anderson able to catch him, get back to his feet. The 
Lubinsky nearly another takedown. Anderson attempting a throw there. I think just underestimating the strength of Lubinsky a little bit there. Head coach Bob Adams telling him to hustle. He expects a lot out of his wrestlers. Very good wrestling coach, very good program as we mentioned earlier. I know he works them hard. He knows that it's his sport that you get out of it, what you put into it, yep. the harder they work, the more successful they're gonna be on the mat. Lubinsky doing a nice job of staying in control throughout this period so far. They're very comfortable on top. It looks like uh, Kyle Anderson does a nice job working to his base, but uh, unable to control the hands of Lubinsky. Makes it what? tough to escape. And no. he is he has attempted a number of different ways to okay. escape and has not been able to make his way out. Kyle, a good wrestler, made it to state last year. Oh, he's got the experience at this level, obviously. One of the Cardinals senior captains. Yep. Come on, Kyle. Kyle really came on strong at the end of last year. He wrestled all year at the weight above Mike Murphy, just like he is right now. But when they went to sections for the individual, Mike Murphy elected to stay at the same weight, and Kyle actually dropped two weight classes and really took off. Lubinsky now trying to work him to his back, but back to the base for Anderson. And that's gonna do it for period two. No points. Lubinsky able to ride him out for two minutes. Well, another tight one. Yep, and now Lubinsky's going to the bottom, so he's got a great opportunity to score from the bottom. Anderson's gonna See if he tries to ride him out here. Or it's exactly what he didn't want to happen, to give up a reversal. Lubinsky right already proven that he can, he can stay in control on top. Anderson. Lubinsky also a very physical match. Again, Kyle was almost out with him, almost looking for a cradle there, but Lubinsky just using his strength, able to avoid it. Midway through the third, and it's a 6-2 lead for Elk Rivers holding Lubinsky. Lubinsky trying to throw a half in there. Coach Adams telling Kyle to stand up. He's trying to get to his feet. Stand up, Kyle. Let's do it. But again, Kyle has basically been wrestling without his hands, without his arms. There's Lubinsky's been doing a great job of controlling him. Able to get the escape. Lubinsky immediately deep on a takedown. He's, he's a very aggressive wrestler. He won't get that final takedown, but a 6-3 win for Lubinsky. 
Cut the Cardinals lead to two. Midway through. Well, Zan, we're probably right now going to see uh, Elk River's best wrestler. He's their only only rated wrestler at 145. That's uh, weight 40, rated number five in the state at that weight class. But against Junior Matt Jolkowski. Forty trying to get in again on the legs of Jolkowski. And now a takedown for Jul for Forty. Our poor Matt gets keeps his head up. Matt has his, uh, his work cut out for him here in this match. Forty immediately put the legs in and looking for some different pitting combinations. But right now, Jolkowski doing a nice job of staying on his base. Forty working on that left arm, trying to get it control across the chest of Jolkowski. See if he can roll him over that way. And now into the cradle, and Jokowski in a lot of trouble. Now Forty's now now has a lot of leverage here. Oh, he's doing a nice job with that bottom leg. Yep. He sticks, just drills that knee into the rib cage. Yep, trying to be straighten him now. out. I hate when that happens. <laughs> the knee into the rib cage. Five seconds. He will not get the pin before the buzzer sounds. He will get three near fall points and a 5-0 lead going to period number two. Oh, good job by Jokowski to stay out of the pin. There's some injury time out here. Jokowski has a bloody nose. An opportunity for a little coaching over there as well. well. How we will be talking about gymnastics on sports night? Yes, week, absolutely. Yes. I can't wait. Boy, I thought that said boys baseball there for a second. Don't uh, don't push yourself ahead in the seasons too much. We'll probably have. A, I imagine we'll have a full show this week. We should. Yeah. We'll have the Cardinals and the Bengals boys basketball. Highlights, Coon Rapids Osseo swimming highlights. Of course, highlights from this evening's broadcast, as well as uh, what did we do on, on Tuesday? Boy, we did boys we did hockey, boys the win, hockey, their first the win. win of the year. That's right. How can you forget that? Your sport. I... Try not to pick favorites. Is it that obvious? It's that obvious. Well, you have to start sports night with a shot at me. But that I, I that gonna, maybe I talk about it a little too much. Well, not necessarily hockey too much. We were just talking about your, you know, your historic high school career. <laughs> well, it's you who always brings up my my uh, much ballyhooed, uh, albeit incredibly fictional uh, minor league. Oh, career. your minor league baseball career is is another story uh, event that we talk about. Highlight Tenon just reminded me of your diving career, but I know I, I have to tell him that was intramural. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't competitive. So forty able to get the escape to start period two, makes it a six-zero lead. Natural Kowalski is also a lot of junior varsity, uh, one of their best wrestlers. And during that time out there, we just he's getting a little bit of coaching. Bob Montague, the head JV coach, is over there talking to him. He's worked with Matt a lot. 
over the last couple years. Bob's birthday today. 55. 55. You know, I know. See, you talk about uh, announcing things on air there. Could get well, that's you. okay. It's okay for, you know, when it's women. You talk about women. They're very sensitive about their age. And I didn't say how old she was when she graduated. Well, yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> she was eight. Bob Montague, <laughs> Bob Montague, though, now qualifies for that senior discount at yeah, the country well. buffet. And he's, he, yeah, he but can so sign up yeah, for AARP. Like yeah. How he's already a member. I'm a proud member. Oh, is it, is it 50 or 55? It's 50. Oh. Yeah, I get a quarter off popcorn at the movie theater, so it's a great deal. <laughs> how about how about at the Roger E. Carlson uh, Fieldhouse? Any discounts no, that, on the popcorn? No, here? no discounts at the popcorn. 40 is, as we talked about early, earlier in this match, Highly rated wrestler for Elk River, and he has been in complete control through two periods, leading eight to nothing. Zilkowski doing everything he can to stay off his back for the final 10 seconds here in the second. That's 10 nothing now in favor of 40. As we move to the third. First 40 will be looking for the tech fall. At least. I switched to a double leg there by 40. And Matt immediately giving up on it and not getting himself into any trouble going down into a pinning combination because right now that's he wants to stay away from a pin, save every team point possible. And just three near fall points would give 40 that tech fall and the extra two team points. A little over a minute left, period three. 40 taking a long look at the scoreboard as he returns to the center of the ring. <laughs> 40 looking for a cradle. Wrapping it up. And he's got Jokowski flipped oh, he's over. He's got him in trouble now. And this is going to be at least a tech fall if he doesn't get the slap on the mat. See the, bo the bottom knee now is underneath Matt. And he slides that out and puts it into his rib cage right there. Now he's looking for the pin. And there he it is. It. 28 seconds left. And that is going to give the Elks the 21-17 lead as we move to 152. Nick Smith wrestling for Elk River against Yang Deng for Coon Rapids. Was on the does Carter normally wrestle at 152? I you know I don't know that he's wrestled at 152 yet this year. Because he's rated at 152. Yeah, that's been there that since the beginning of the year, and that's gonna be something that he'll have to decide here shortly if he's gonna go down to 152 or stay at uh, 160. He started out the year wrestling at 171. Well and, and that's he bulked up he was bulked up from football. Yeah, and Bob Bob talked that uh, he could even wrestle as high as 189 this year. Big takedown for Nick Smith. And again, Elk River scores first. 
Yeah, and that's a decision that they'll have to make when he weighs in because if he weighs in, he has to have you know so many of his weigh-ins at 152 if he wants to finish the season there for sections. And if he weighs in at 152, then he would only be eligible to go up to 171 because he can only go up two weight classes. Well, I certainly don't think he'd be... Uh... I don't think he'd be going up to 189 come tournament time. No, that would be a special <laughs> situation where if you were in at 160 and you wanted uh, certain matchups, uh, that it could happen if you needed a big win at 189 where you have to put somebody up there and hope they believe somebody else can pull off the win at 160. Dang in a lot of trouble. Trying to bridge out of back-to-back -back pins for Elk River. And now able to flip back over. But another great first period for the upper wrestlers. Smith deferred, Dang will take the top position. Smith quickly out of it to his feet. Yeah, it didn't take him long to get out. Uh, Dang trying to chop him down by chopping at the elbow and Smith didn't budge, immediately stood up and came out of there rather easily. Another good hip toss from Nick Smith. And he's got the pin 30 seconds into the second period. That's going to give the Elks a 10 point lead, 27 17. Any concern for Coon Rapids at this point, son? Well, there's definitely concern. You don't ever want to give up three pins, no matter who you're wrestling. And uh, let's see, Elk River, now we're going to get into the final five matches where Elk River finishes sophomore, sophomore, then three freshmen. So I would say Coon Rapids still has Carter Adams here and Eric Birdall. Tyler Gregerson, his opponent, a very quick takedown for Carter Adams, and he'll just let Gregerson go. No, Carter Adams, another wrestler, was very aggressive on the attack at all the time. Still digging for that leg, and he gets another takedown. Setting up a lot of his takedowns with that initial fireman's carry. The fireman's to a single there. Getting control of the right arm of Gregerson, flipping him over, and now changing strategy. Cradle. And Gregerson hit a world of trouble. Right at the center of the ring, a minute left. Oh, good job getting out of it. He's able to kick yep. his way out. Three more points for Adams. And again, he puts him right back to his back. Carter spun out and then took a look up at the clock to see where he was. And now he's going chest to chest. And a pin in the first period for Carter Adams. Now, nice, uh, nice aggressive style. Carter Adams comes out, gets the pin, gets points back for the Cardinals. Now just trailing by four. That was a quick one. Can you name that band, Howie Shapiro? I cannot. It was Iron Maiden. Oh. Yeah, see, it's 
Jason Harbinson for the Cardinals, taking on Zach Sierra at 171. Yeah, Iron Maiden uh, was a little bit after when I was uh, impressionable. Well, I'm still kind of impressionable. <laughs> but. Sarah with a double leg takedown. Sarah Harbinson trying to stay out of it, but Sarah able to finish. Elk River has looked very good from the feet tonight. Came out very aggressively and wrestled well. Really dominated the Cardinals from the feet, I feel. All Almost every match. Yeah, you would think probably maybe that, that was their strategy going in because they know that, uh, they know coming in that Coon Rapids, the higher rated team, and an opportunity for them to get some experience, but they know they have to be aggressive to stay in this match. And so far, Elk River's done a pretty good job of that. Well, in the first 11 matches, well, 10, really, because there was no 135 match, Coon Rapids has only scored the first point in one. So actually, 11 because. No, a couple of them. Two didn't. In two, yes. Yep. In uh, Carter Adams yep. and uh, Dan Coughlin. 20 seconds remaining in the period. A tight one in that first period, two to one, Elk River with the lead. As you mentioned, a lot of young wrestlers for Elk River in these last five matches. Actually, six matches. Yeah, six matches they finished with three yep. sophomores and three freshmen. And Cooter Rapids also finishes with a freshman at heavyweight, Tanner Law. Yep. A reversal for Harbinson will give him the lead, and they're off the mat. Another hip toss. So they've been working from the feet, and they've been working on the hip toss. Get another caution on Coon Rapids. Sura able to get to his feet very quickly. Harbinson doing a nice job of keeping control of his leg and not letting go until he's off the mat. Surrey doing just about anything to try and get away, and Harbinson, a very nice job of holding on. Yeah, he's doing a great job of holding on, making sure that he can't get out of the grasp. There's an escape. Yep. Going in for the double leg. 
Harbinson able to keep him at bay. Nice ankle pick. For a trip for the takedown. 30 seconds remaining in the second period. Ten seconds left. It looks like Surrey is going to take a lead into the third period. Yeah, he did a good job down 3-2, coming back to take that 5-3 lead. Elk River being warned for stalling. Can turn out to be a big call with just two seconds to go in the second period. Sarah with a little blood. Gotta get that cleaned up. This match is gonna come down to the wire tonight. Yeah. Let's say uh, we're gonna have toss ups at 189, 275. Coon Rapids is gonna have to win at least one of them and stay away from pins. And I would say Coon Rapids would be a big favorite at 215. Yep. Yeah, Eric Birdall at. Um, at 189 is rated six, but if he wrestling upper right weight at 215. You're right, I was looking at my sheet, that's incredible. Yeah, so Birdall will be next at 189. 189. Yep. I thought he was wrestling 215. Here. I thought so too. I think that Grace Patil will be at 215. 215. Oh, that's right. That's, those are the two that they those that we switched or talked about earlier. Grace Patil, he's the one that didn't make weight at 215 yep. last weekend. I don't think he's down at 189 now. Yeah, I would think not. Yeah. Harvinson working hard. Sura getting control, or trying to get control of Harbinson's left hand. And he's done a great job, two on one. He's gonna be he's being warned, and there's a penalty point for stalling. So that was a big call with two seconds to go with the warning at the end of the second period. You called it, Zahn. This is just, he was just hanging on to the hands and not really trying to do anything. Harbinson getting a little aggressive. 40 seconds. I don't know how it's very able to get to his feet. Harvinson you can see has, he's tired. He has the legs in, but he's, Harvinson does, but I don't know how comfortable he is with this position. That's an escape for Sura. For sure, he got points. Five. He needs. He needs a takedown. See if he goes right off the whistle, or he's going to try to set something up here. Trying to get in on double leg, and Sura stays away. And Sura is going to hold on for another Elk River victory, giving them a five-point lead with just three weight classes remaining. Well, you know, Zani talked about with, with Eric Burdall coming in here. If he can get a pin here, that would be huge to cut into that lead. And he's got the opportunity to do so. Make that a seven-point lead. Good Rapids is going to seven. need. Burdall needs Whoa. to have a pin here. Yep. Well, he came out with fire. He just bum-rushed uh, Sean Ofterhar. And, uh, and out of the mat they go again.
Murdahl will get the takedown this time right on the edge of the mat. But they would definitely like to see him with uh, some more, some bonus points for the team as they trail by seven. Gonna get some more back points. She's trying to flip off her har over. Very important, I think, that uh, Bernal goes for the pin and not the tech fall. Hopefully, because Kanapa's gonna need every team point possible here. Yeah, it's supposed to trailing by seven with uh, two left after this. Well, I heard Bob Adams say there we he go. needs six. I think Eric heard him. I think he's going to, well, he, uh, nice job there to turn over, but uh, Bertall's got him back. There, there it is. There it is. That was huge. Huge. That cuts the lead to one with two to go. Coon Rapids getting only their fourth win on the mat tonight. Rapids has three wins, or three pins, one tech fall, and one forfeit. Kyle Wyman will take on Grice Patil for Coon Rapids. And a quick single leg takedown, and Grice Patil hit the mat hard. If he were unable to go, match would be settled right now. That would be six points, right? That would be. Trainers out there. Got off a quiet in here. Patil caught flat footed. I think we've got a possible hyper extension yep. here. Let's take, take another a, look at yeah, it. Yeah, let's take a look and see what what happened here. His right knee can get bent straight uh, back. Ow. Ooh. Ow. Not meant to bend go. that way. He's going to no. go, though. Good for him. And we'll see how this affects him the rest of the way. You know, mentally, how much is he going to think about that? I think he's been, uh, well, they were out there. I'm sure they were telling him what's at stake here for the team. Right. Well, it doesn't look like it's bothering him too much. I mean, he's driving on it. He's planting it well. It's good. certainly going to be sore tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, but he, I, yeah, I think... I think <laughs> that may be the he, size of a basketball tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah I, I, th I don't think it's going to bother him too much. If he, if he can get to this point, I don't think it'll, he'll think about it until it's over. Right. And he's, uh, trying he's, to keep some weight off of it, but it's going to be... It's definitely... Well, you it can, feels as good right now as it's going to feel yeah. probably for the next three weeks. And you, I mean, you can see him favor a little bit too. You can see him kind of lifting his leg up a little bit off the mat. Wyman well, looking to get right back at that right leg. Well, and, and, and that's probably a smart idea for him. Oh, and Wyman didn't even get points for what would have been a takedown on that injury. And now what 
Wesley Grice Patil able to get the takedown. Wyman able to get back up, but Patil keeping a grasp of that right thigh. Just hang on. Less than 10 seconds left. Oh, and a reversal in the last two seconds for Kyle Wyman. And it'll be all tied going to the second period. Yeah, he's definitely favoring it a bit as he yep. goes back to the center of the mat. Well, his opponents obviously have to, have to realize that. So he's going after he's going after that knee. Got a couple points. getting up a little high and nearly got rolled over. Patil, there's Patil looking to get back to his base. Get the hips up. Yeah, and if that knee's bothering him, he's not gonna have all the strength that he needs. Come to the end of the second period here. Lyman trying to get him rolled over as that right arm across his chest, but unable to do so. He will, though, have a 4 2 lead for the Elks going to the third period. Oh, it's a, this is a big period, Zon. What, what do you think your strategy is here if you're Clone Rapids? Uh, finish this match out. Do not get majored. You know, the win would be great, but we got to keep this to within four points. If you can look behind the Coon Rapids bench right now, we've got Tanner Lau being coached up by the two captains, Adams and Birdall. They know what's coming up here. Battle of the freshmen to decide the match. Oh, we've, see, we've seen a good one tonight. I'm not sure I thought it would be this close as we, when we started this evening. No, I knew Coon Rapids, uh, you know, they missed the uh, Karan Knicks. And Elk Rivers wrestled an outstanding match. Yep. Don't, you know, oh, they no, did absolutely. exactly what they've had to do to come out here. Uh, they beat Kyle Anderson. You know, Karan Knicks not here. But, you know, Coon Rapids, like I said, there's only won four matches on the mat. One by forfeit. And one plus one by forfeit. Yep. And even if if it is a loss for Grice Patil here, what what an outstanding effort for him to come back from that. Oh, exactly. That, I, mean, I mean, that was early in the first period, and, and to to wrestle in what I got to I've got to imagine is quite a bit of pain, and to keep it from you know he, he's just by staying out there. He, he is giving his team a better chance to win. Well, he, he, by staying out there, he saves three team points. Yeah. He's digging the elbow into the head. He goes to a half Nelson here. The Elk River bench and fans are on their feet, hoping that 
Wyman can get Grice Patel rolled over because that would, as we talked about, that would end it. That's no, not going to happen. Give uh, Elk River the victory, but it will end in a 5-2 win for Kyle Wyman and make it a four-point lead for the Elks going to the final event of the night. Well, it's a big one. Yep, Tanner Law for Cooter Evans coming off a 2-2 two two weekend. At the Rumble on the red, had a close loss to an outstanding wrestler from Faribault. Won two matches, lost his fourth, so we're going to see here. Well, you know, and he, as you mentioned, just a freshman, a lot of pressure on that young man going into the final match of the evening. Absolutely. Both these teams, both these teams have freshmen wrestling that heavyweight yep. in a conference like this. So it puts a lot of pressure on them. Ryan Kukendall for the Elks. Lau comes out being the aggressor. Cardinals need at least a major decision, which is a win by what, eight? Yes, and they start out behind by one with the equipment there. I think uh, Lau had a bracelet on there to start the, came out to the match with. Yeah, those are things you just, you just can't do. Yeah, you know, you give up a point because you're wearing a piece of jewelry. Call that a freshman mistake. Yep. You know, doesn't knows he doesn't want to give him much up because he, if he just, you know, wrestles a basic good match, he gives his, make sure his team gets the victory. Right, it's such a fine line there between being aggressive and yep. not the Tanner's gonna finish this match strong. Under 30 seconds, no one has been able to score a point. Oh, Tanner works in our practice room a lot with Eric Birdall and Carter Adams both. And I think uh, he's looking for one of the Birdall throws here. He's got him locked got up. In. And there it is. Took him down. And now has, White has the, his man into the oh. ball and a pin to win it for Tanner Lowe. Wow. It was quick once he got him down. Able to put the squeeze on, finishes it with a pin and a Cooner Rapids victory. Coach Bob Adams standing behind the bench, just kind of shaking his head. He knows that they're very fortunate to escape tonight with a victory yeah, for the team. <laughs> a little bit of a smile on, his, on Coach Adams' face, just a little bit of one. You're right though, they took a deep breath and realized that Delk River came in and, and wrestled an excellent match, Don. And they did, as you mentioned, they did what they had to do to stay competitive and to be in this. And it, if it wasn't for that pin at the end of, of that match, they may be looking at a defeat here. Well, it could have been only, you know, six mat weights where they came out with the victory. But one was a forfeit, four were pins, and one was a tech fall. So, you know, Elk River's going to go back thinking, yep. this, you know what, all they've got to do, you know, if there was ever a rematch, which are, you know, highly unlikely now, unless Correct. to be in a state tournament type thing, but that they just 
re, you know, really wrestled a really good match against the number six rated team in the state. And Cooter yeah. Rapids is also going to have to go from the other side of this. They're going to have to learn that they can't overlook anybody. They've still got no. Centennial and uh, some other teams before they hit the Nolka. Yeah. So, but the, but the win, it, it was a, it was a good good comeback at the end for Tanner Lau. And the entire Cardinal program can breathe a sigh of relief. We're going to take a quick breather. We'll be back with some post-game reaction right after this. The second season starts right now. Wow, do we have a show for Whew. you tonight? Come out. Busy afternoon Monday for firefighters trying to contain several grass fires along. This is going to be a very good and very close game. Welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. Such a big event definitely needs a third man. We've heard a lot lately about how families are struggling to make ends meet. Many of them will need help this winter to pay their heating bills. Fortunately, the Salvation Army's Heat Share program is there, helping families in crisis pay their heating bills when they have nowhere else to turn. Heat Share relies on funding from utilities like Centerpoint Energy and the generous contributions of customers. Please help make a donation today by contacting the Salvation Army at 1-800-SAL-ARMY. The family you help could be right next door. This message brought to you by Centerpoint Energy. Once you post your image online, you can't take it back. Anyone can see it. Family, friends, anyone. Remember, think before you post. No, you're not in trouble. I just uh, want to set some ground rules. Like, like what? Well, remember last week when you hit Vinny in the head with the shovel? <laughs> I do not recall that. <laughs> of course not. Well, it was pretty graphic. Too graphic for the kids. <laughs> so I'm going to have to block you. Uh, you know, i got to make this up to you. This is Vinny's watch, and I want you to have it. You deserve no, it. thank you. <laughs> That's really not necessary. No, no. Come here. <laughs> Ah, it's a great day, isn't it? Yeah. Too bad your boat's gonna sink at 11.05. Don't come closer. I have rabies. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that helps measure your risk of a heart attack and other complications. Learn more at diabetesa1c.org. and there's no contest, but this game is not played on paper, and you know in this conference anything can happen. Anderson drops back to pass, has a little time, and he will pitch again, and Muhlenberg running right. Man, Howie, a big opponent coming in for the Coon Rabbits Cardinals. This defense only giving up 11 points a game. Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse, a tight one, but a victory for the Cardinals. It goes down to the final match, and freshman Tanner Lau with a great toss 
and pin in the final seconds of the first period to give the Cardinals the slimmest of victories, 35-33, the final team score. Three pins, three first period pins in the last five matches, or last five weight classes for the Cardinals. And they needed every one of them as Elk River built that early lead. Another look at Tanner Law that just locks them up. Catches them off balance, drills them to the mat, and finishes it strong. It's got to be a great that is That is a builder. big freshman. Yes. And, and his brother was not big. His brother was a running back, Evan Lau. Right. Tanner, uh, though, uh, had him in freshman football this year. He's got great feet, and you can look for him to make some contributions if he has a good summer in the weight room on the varsity next year. But he's going to have to you know, put in some time in the weight room, get a little stronger. On the line, I imagine, or... Defensive line. Okay. And uh, you can look for him. And you know what? This wrestling for him is just outstanding. Great balance for him. Leverage. And it's going to do nothing but help him. He's a three-sport athlete. And he is an athlete. Very good on his feet. Big, And especially for how big he is, he's very athletic. How about a, how about a tight end? Or is that pushing it a little? It might be right now. That but would you be don't a know. really he, nice big target for who, who the future Cardinal yeah, and he's quarterback. And he's just a freshman, too. You know, bodies change. So never say never. Well, we are awaiting word from a couple of the Cardinals. And uh, Howie Shapiro still waiting for someone to join him down and by the interview camera. We'll take another quick break and uh, hopefully have some reaction when we return. Those uh, locusts? What? Those locusts? Yeah. I'm throwing rocks at some stuff, and next thing I know, locusts. Sounds like bad karma. You should try volunteering or walking a little old lady across the street or, you know, something good. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Stay on the universe's good side. Volunteer, vote, get involved. The odds of a child being in a fatal automobile accident are 1 in 23,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit AutismSpeaks.org. The second season starts right now. Wow, do we have a show for you tonight. Come out. Busy afternoon Monday for firefighters trying to contain several grass fires along. This is going to be a very good and very close game. Welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. Such a big event definitely needs a third man. I am folding the pants. The pants are long. <laughs> Do they go on my head? Do they? Do the pants go on my head? <laughs> no. They go on Everyday moments can become teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. All the action, all the emotion, all the excitement. It's all here, Cardinal Sports Live on CTN. Be sure to watch as Coon Rapids takes on Blaine in live boys basketball action only on cable channel 15. You guys want to move in a little? Welcome back to Roger E. Carlson Fieldhouse where the Coon Rapids Cardinals narrowly escaped with a win. This evening, I'm with you, too, of course, two of the stars here are Eric Berdahl to my left, Carter Adams to my right. Eric, I'm going to talk to you first. Talk about, uh, the, talk about your pin and, and what was going, what was happening at that point. It was, you came out really aggressive, got the pin. Talk a little bit about that, please. Well, I just knew that we needed the pin, and uh, I just came out there and knew I could get it. Just went out and pin him. 
How, how much pressure at towards the end? And we'll, oh, there's another question we're going to ask one of you guys. But how much pressure at the end when it was it was close and you needed that big pin at the end? I didn't feel really any pressure. I mean, I knew I wasn't really wrestling someone who was, you know, rated up in the state. So yeah, I'm, I knew I pin him, so. I'm talking more about how it was at the end of the match where where, where Tanner Lau got that pin. Yeah, we. Not, I was real nervous. You know, Tanner's really improved a lot, but you know, we just needed that pin. I was kind of nervous for him. Well, congratulations on a good win. Carter, talk about your pin. I, I, again, another aggressive wrestler coming out. Talk about uh, the, what happened during that match. Well, uh, I knew I knew I had a freshman, and, you know, it, it was going to be, a, like, an easy match. But uh, our team wasn't performing as well as we should have been. And, you know, I just wanted to, I wanted to set the tone for the next matches to come. Talk about what uh, you and Eric talked to Tanner about when right before that match. You, you obviously had to have the pin. I had to have uh, at least an eight-point win. Talk about what you guys talked to him about before he went out and wrestled. We just talked to him, told him, you know, go out there, do your stuff. You are not the underdog. You know, the pressure's on him. You know, you're expected to win, so you control the match. You do your stuff. Yeah. Great job. Congratulations on the on the win, guys. Back to you. All right. Thank you. And uh, a, a great, nice to have leadership from guys like that. They went out, they set the example, then they went and told their young teammate what he needed, what they needed, they as a team needed him to do, and he went out and got it done. I think that exemplified what Carter Adams brings to this school, not only to the wrestling team, but the football team, the baseball team, state championship last year, which he was on, state championship individual in wrestling. Just what he'd said there, he wanted to go out and pin his guy to set the tone for the rest of the match. And then the advice he gave to the freshman, Tanner Lau, about being, that he was in charge, he gave him all the confidence in the world to go out there and finish the match the way he did. And that's exactly what he did for them. A, a big come from behind victory for the Cardinals. A great effort by the Elks, but the Cardinals hold on for the win. That's going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports. Want to thank everyone out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN for the entire crew, including Howie Shapiro and the Golden Grapplers on Knee Neighbor. I'm Joe Young saying goodnight.